What is the Shemona Esrei prayer? And the whole point of Shemona Esrei is to pray for divine mercy and is to connect with this idea of Ein Od Movado. It's this total connection with the only thing in the universe, which is Hashem. With that, we use the Shemona Esrei prayer. We focus our mind, we focus our concentration, we focus all of our soul and our heart in this total unification and synchronization of all the essential parts of the human being. We're connecting that with a certain service of Hashem, the Shemona Esrei is the tool that the Jew does to do that and to connect with his needs or her needs. Rabbi Acha, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi, said also the one who established the wording of this prayer established it according to a specific order. If one recites it out of order, he has not fulfilled its obligation. This is what was enacted by Ezra and the men of the great assembly who included prophets, Gemara reads, the first three blessings and the last three blessings are the praise of the omnipresent, the Holy One, and the middle 12 blessings are for the needs of the people. When he recites the last three blessings, you're going to be like a servant who received his allotment from his master and he begs to leave and go on his way after having some sort of gratitude. And the first three are talking about praise about the king, but that's going to be before he makes any requests. You're like a servant asking for your needs in the middle. The Gemara reads that grant us understanding, and once you have granted us understanding, then we can ask, accept our repentance, and once you have accepted our repentance, then we can ask, forgive us, and once you have forgiven us, then we can ask, say, redeem us from our enemies and our troubles, and once you have redeemed us, then we can ask and say, heal our sickness, and once you have healed our sickness, then we can ask, bless our years, and once you have blessed our years, then we can ask, gather us together, and once once you have gathered us together, then we can ask, judge us with righteousness and appoint righteous judges for us. And the Gemara continues, says, once you have judged us with righteousness, then we can ask, subdue our opponents. And once you have subdued our opponents, then we can ask and say, let us prevail in judgment. And once you have let us prevail, then we can state our final need, which is to build our temple. Each of the Shemona Esrei blessings say, blessed are you, Hashem. And why would that be? Over here, you also have a prayer structure where everything has a specific order because each thing has its own subject. Each thing necessitates a different statement of blessed are you, Hashem. Shem starts off and it says, grant us understanding. Once you have granted us understanding, then we ask, accept our repentance. If there is no insight, there is no prayer. You have to understand what you did, have Heshbon and Nefesh, and be able to look in the mirror and understand. And then only after you have understanding can you have forgiveness. What good is there if a person isn't going to repent and is going to continue to sin on a daily basis? Without forgiveness, all your daily troubles still weigh on you, and it's still a burden to you. That's why we're saying every day to redeem us, to take us out of our troubles. One of the key things about doing tshuva is that you are redeemed. That's an essential part of the creation is that there is tshuva not only for Jewish people, but also for the non-Jews. In fact, in the story of Cain and Abel, Hashem himself points out that there is tshuva when Cain is bringing a bad quality offering. Hashem says, you can change yourself. You can fix your actions. You can adjust. You can be better. Implicit within the creation of the universe is redemption and forgiveness and tshuva and improving yourself and changing your actions. And that's why the redemption here is in there. And that's going to be before we're asking for health. What's the point if you have good health, but your enemies are pursuing you to destroy your mind and give you stress? 
ultimately going to make you sick. What good is it? So that's why we're worrying about having redemption. And after that, we're worrying about having healing. For the next part, bless our years. And once you've blessed our years, we ask, gather us together. And what's the point of having any money if you don't have any health? That doesn't really have much value. That's why the blessing of the crops and the blessing of the year is going to be after the blessing of the health. It's going to move on and gather us together. Once you've gathered us together, it says judge us with righteousness. So why would that be? The Gemara listed these six blessings that are requests for an individual. But if you look here carefully, you see this changes now to the Jewish people as a whole. These are actually communal requests to start the redemption of Israel and to gather in the exiles. And it also is pointing out that there's divine providence on the individual, and there's also divine providence on Am Yisrael itself. So too, Judaism will give like a brit milah to the world and is going to change humanity itself to know Hashem and to elevate the state of consciousness to a higher level. And that's why we're praying now for the community redemption after it's talking about judging us with righteousness and why would it be talking about judging us with righteousness the jewish people being gathered together they need leaders and judges we're praying that once we're being in gathered that we're going to have the right kind of torah leadership where we're going to be following halakha and going to be like a Sanhedrin. And once you've judged us with righteousness, it talks about subduing our opponents and enemies. The judges have the power to subdue the opponents under halaha and under the law and under what the Torah says. Then it's talking about let us prevail in judgment. In other words, it's showing that you know, you're going to have these righteous people who are going to witness the undoing of all of these evil people and even worse, these Arab Rob people who actively try to undo the Torah and actively undo Judaism. These Arab Rav are always and have always been doing everything to hold back the mental state and spiritual state of the Jewish people. The restoring of the Davidic monarchy is going to be a big part of the rebuilding of the temple. Rabbi Yirmiya said 120 elders, among whom were prophets, formulated this prayer, the Shemona Esrei, in a specific order. The prayers that you have in your hands today came from these prophets and Ezra and men of the great assembly. This is something that is based in prophecy. The order is precisely calculated. In fact, even the number of letters in here is precisely calculated words is precisely calculated and you have something that is part of an ancient tradition and it's very important to stick to that ancient tradition this is elucidated and illuminated with prophecy and prophets and Ruach HaKodesh and what you have today is something that you should try to connect you to a Kodesh Baruch Hu because this is how you can start to get your prayers to be answered. If you want your prayers to be answered, you have to say it where it's fluent in your mouth. The Gemara says, and why is the prayer composed of 18 blessings? The first 18 Tehillim corresponds to one's daily prayer and they are followed by the verse that says, may Hashem answer you on the day of distress. And the verse's opening phrase, may Hashem answer you, does double duty. First, it reads as a reference to the preceding Tehillim, and it expresses the hope that Hashem will answer somebody's daily prayer. The verse is then read independently. It says, May Hashem answer you on the day of distress. The implication is that if one's daily prayer is not answered, one must undertake a day of distress. In other words, a fast day. Now, another way to look at that is to say, hey, wait a second, why did my prayer not get answered? And you have to do heshbon and nefesh, and you have to start to look at it. In other words, if it's so serious that your prayers are not getting answered, that the rabbis are saying, hey, you should actually be taking a fast day. And we know that fasting, charity, and prayer are very important for finding repentance. And this is a clue that that somebody whose prayer is not going to be answered has to look at themselves in the mirror and look honestly and evaluate their sins and evaluate who they are and what they're doing and try to improve themselves. And that's why it's so important to learn Torah because learning Torah, you can start to identify what is wrong with my actions, what's wrong with my thinking, what's wrong with the way I live my life. And you can start to try to make tshuva and improve yourself so that you will get your prayers answered. And this is a way, you know, more limited things that you can get more daily prayers answered and that tends to go toward people that are more holy 
and more clean of sin. Rabbi Manna's teaching, like the Gemara's previous teaching, concerns a person who sees that his own prayer has not been answered. And that verse advises the person to beg his Torah teacher, whose prayer is going to be more potent, and to pray on his behalf. If your prayers are not answered, it's a clue that you have to look at yourself in the mirror and start trying to make yourself more holy, and you have to clean your thinking, and you have to clean your hashkafa, and you have to start to connect more to the Shulchan Aruch, and you have to start to learn more what is kosher behavior, what is not kosher behavior, what is going to be clean money, what is not clean money, because you are punished measure for measure for your sins. When you're sinning, you're going to pay and your prayers are not going to be answered because you're so far removed from the single source of holiness that it's like you're filthy with dirt. You don't have the merit to have your prayers answered. And so that's why you have to clean yourself up from sin. The only way to do that is to be honest with yourself, look in the mirror, and start learning Torah so you can know what is correct and what is not correct. Because only the Torah has the absolute method and system for what is correct behavior and what is not correct behavior, as elucidated by the Hachamim. Now, the Gemara is going to return to the matter of the 18 blessings and offers a second explanation on the significance of the number 18. And Rabbi Simon says, the 18 blessings correspond to the 18 vertebrae in the spine, for at the time a person stands and prays, he must bow. And the Gemara says, what is the reason? For the verse states, all my bones shall exclaim, Hashem, who is like you? And the reason why we're bowing is because when we are praying, when the Jew is praying, the Jew is praying with his body, and the Jew is praying with his soul, and the Jew is praying with total concentration, and his mind is aware of the prayer. And when the Jew is praying, they're directing their heart to the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem, where all of the blessing enters into the universe. We were created in the mud, and we're created out of clay, and Hashem blew the soul into us. And when we're connecting back to Hashem, and we're climbing up this ladder of prayer, we are doing it with our whole self. And the way that we do that is with the Shemona Esrei. The proper way you, you're bowing when you're doing the Shemona Esrei makes the top 18 parts of your spine protrude. Now, we don't do such a deep prayer that we're totally bowing with our whole back. We don't want to appear arrogant. Is This is trying to show the proper way of bowing and the proper way of posture. That does doesn't contradict the other explanation by Rabbi Yeshua Vain Levi, although another blessing was added later, the blessing of the sectarians and rebellious sinners in the blessing who humbles wanton sinners, namely the blessings of the sectarians, which was added by Rabban Gamliel and Yavna. Nowadays, we recite 19 blessings. Rabbi Hanina, in the name of Rabbi Pinchas, says, the 18 blessings correspond to the 18 times that the names of the patriarch are written together in the Torah in the same verse where it says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the obligation according to this is to pray three times a day and that three daily times is going to be instituted by the patriarchs and when formalizing the text of the daily prayer the rabbis set the number of blessings to correspond to the number of verses that contain the names of all three patriarchs together you're praying and that you're trying to refine yourself so that you can go in the way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because the tree of life is really going to be the path of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The way to get to Shemayim and the way to connect to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and the way to have a better life in this world is to go in the way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that is why the 18 blessings in the Shemona Esrei was composed by Ezra and the men of the Great Assembly. When we talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're talking about a 
continuous line of transmission that goes from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it goes to Moses, our teacher, and it goes to all of the successors in a continuous line. And the gadolim that we have today are that line. The gadolim that we have today, the Torah that we have from the great holy gadolim that we have today, this is the Torah that was given from Har Sinai, all of the oral law following the Shulchan Aruch. This is the path that leads you to a better life in this world. It is guaranteed by the Torah. The Torah guarantees it that if you follow the sages of your day and you follow the Torah, that you're going to have a better existence. The last three blessings are we're praying for the temple service, we're praying for thanksgiving, and we're praying for peace. The last three prayers, you have the temple service, which is going to be the worldwide recognition of the knowledge of Hashem. That means all of the world and all of the Jews are going to be seeing the divine providence in this world where Hashem is actively running the world just like Judaism has been speaking about but that experience will be so clear that it will be like when Adam and Eve were in the garden and humanity will experience that vision of seeing Hashem running the world with that kind of clarity. In other words, that this opacity that we have today where it's very hard to see Hashem in this world, that's going to be changed where human perspective and human understanding will be elevated. It's going to become very easy and clear when you have the temple service come again. And also the Shemona Esrei is a substitution for the temple service. So very fitting to be ending the last three with a statement of the temple service. We were looking for the source where we're going to recite blessings over foods and over other things as well, like when you have a new garment. Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish said, The verse states, You said to Hashem, You are my master, my goodness, Baal Alecha. This is when King David is speaking to his soul and it's calling out to Hashem and it quotes Hashem as responding to the soul. And it says, this is in Tehillim 16.2, Baal Alecha. Now, Rabbi Acha comes and interprets this. Rabbi Acha says, what is the meaning of Baal Alecha? It says, God replied to David, I declare that I will not bring goodness upon the world without you. And it's read as, Bil Adecha. The Yafe Mara explains about this with this word Bil Adecha that God's reply to King David is that goodness will not come into this world without you. In other words, without prayer. And the Afe Marah explains it as no goodness shall come into the world unless you request it by praying for it. And what this does is this helps us to understand the final three blessings in the Shemona Esrei. And then you have this idea of thanksgiving, just like you're saying brachas on the things that you get because you're manifesting them into reality through prayer that you're giving thanksgiving in the Amida. Now, you have a part in the Amida where you have your personal requests. You're supposed to be requesting things that you need and then you're having thanksgiving because you've brought things into reality as this verse is talking about and as the ephemera is explaining. And then later on when you're going to go use that object that you've effectively brought into the world through prayer that you're going to say a bracha on it. The Shemona Esrei ends with the blessing of peace because when you have that kind of vision where you can see the divine providence very clearly in your life and it's so clear that you can see the heavens working in your life with a God who is actively creating and where you are at the spiritual level where you've cleaned yourself up from sin and you've made yourself holy and you are praying to bring things down into this world and then you have the recognition that this thing that you are about to use was brought into the world through this manifestation through prayer and then you're going to go and you're going to bless each thing that's a statement of thanksgiving and you're going to be living in a life of peace and this is the life that Hashem intended for every human being at the point of creation in the garden of Eden and I want to point out one other point that in the brachas when you're blessing fruit and you're blessing bread this is in the present tense not in the past tense it means that we have a god who is continuously creating judaism has a god who is actively creating
creating. So very important to realize that no goodness will come into the world unless you request it by praying for it. And then once you have it, you have thanksgiving for it. And then you say a bracha on it. And when you live that kind of life, you're going to experience peace because you as a human being and as a Jew are living the way you were made to live back with the Garden of Eden and to experience that. And only Judaism can give you that. No other system in the world can give you that and restore you back to the original point of how you're supposed to live your life. Everything else will mislead you and waste your time and you'll have stress and anxiety and depression because you are doing something that's a little bit different than how you were designed. For brachas, you should spend a couple of years trying trying to think about and trying to learn about in addition to whatever you're doing in Judaism because this is one of the deepest metaphysical things that you can start to have access with this and prayer and that's why Rambam holds out that these two things are going to be necessary for your development as a Jew and why you need to really start focusing on concentrating on it because you're starting to interact with the world in a different way and bring things into into reality in existence and interact with things in a spiritual way and it changes who you are and you're going to be a happier person because you're going to have a closer relationship with a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and you're going to be closer to the source of creation and you're going to experience divine providence and feel it in your life. Ultimately, that is going to give you a more meaningful existence than anything else that you can do. Have a great day.